Yeah, I I think I think um, because I mean you get to a point where the work and the career and things are kind of humming along, and it's really great and I love my job but I think in order for me to remain fresh and inspired and and feeling satisfied with getting so much from this life I need to be balancing that with um, you know lending my voice to those who have none and uh, I don't know I'm not perfect, so it does make me feel quite good, you know, when I, you know, go off on a friend or arrive late or just, you know, stupid stuff that everybody deals with in their lives, their shortcomings, their weaknesses, their, you know, their character flaws. I think it goes a long way to helping me deal with some of those. You know, that's what giving does. It, in turn, it feeds you. It's actually quite selfish. Now, you've, 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 it, sometimes it feels like you've made a point since your surgery in June to not cover up your chest. Oh, no. Um, your sternum is, is there for all to see. Yeah. Oh, it's just a part of me now. It's just as much a part of me now as it was then. So I'm not going to go and buy a whole new wardrobe as much as I would like. <laughs> So, I mean, we know you're singing, you were in New York City opening this season for the New York City Opera on Thursday night. You were opening the season for the LA Philharmonic and Gustavo Dudamel in the, a few weeks before that at the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, so that's not an issue. Yeah. Um, you were just talking about your charity work and you stared death in the face a few months ago. Um, yeah. And so I'm wondering if, if that experience has, has changed your outlook at all, what you want to do from now. <laughs> Well, I mean, when I visited Uganda for the first time in the north, we had to drive really fast on the dirt roads so that we wouldn't be shot down by the rebels. So staring death in the face, like it's kind of like it's, if it's your time, it's your time. I mean, there's not much you can do about it. I mean, I'm not apathetic and I'm not like today school about living life and I'm certainly not cavalier. I just think that when it's your time, it's your time. And I thought that in June, as I was, you know, counting back from 100, <laughs> but the thing I'm, ugh, I was thinking, well, at least nobody can accuse me of being lazy. <laughs> you know, at least nobody can say, ugh, it's a shame she didn't use what she had. You know, I, I felt very satisfied. And I also, as a Christian, believe that the next life is better anyway, so, um, I, I have, I mean, I have stuff to do. I mean, honestly, I have stuff that I want to do. It's not that I, I think I thought, well, if I, if I never have to learn another barrack score. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been learning some, haven't you? Oh my God, yes, I'm doing the barracks even for a little next month in Miami. And I'm like, who said yes to this? <laughs> who decided this was the way to go? Because the last time I learned bear, I was sitting in front of my piano crying. I was like, I can't hear it! I don't know what's going on! It's like, you know, and you're like, but that's. And then, of course, they love it. You know, and then I learned it, and I'm like, oh, this is the best music ever. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, yeah. And I go back for more. Anyway, so the thing is. <laughs> I just, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I think you answered. Welcome to my head. <laughs> now, just in case you're getting the wrong idea about Misha, just kind of sitting back and just talking. Um, two, weeks, two weeks after your surgery, she had to be held back. I, I was talking to people at, at, at Stratford Festival who she was supposed to sing at, the, at a special night in Stratford last summer. Um, and she, I mean, she, sorry, I should, I should address you directly. Okay. Misha was ready to go on, or had said to somebody, I can do it in a couple of weeks. And this is somebody who's had her, her chest pried open. That's true. Um, <laughs> and and I, I, spoke to, I spoke to Misha's teacher, erstwhile teacher here in Toronto, Mary Morrison, who said, oh, Misha, 
She just won't stop. She's like, oh, I don't know what to do with you. You never slow down. I mean, you are shamed years off everybody's lives around you. And I was like, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was, when it was time to be back, I was ready to be back. But I, 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 I did, I, I, did, I am ambitious. I mean, I have stuff to do. And I can't be all slowy downy for the, but you know, it was, I had six, week, six weeks off in the summer anyway. So, I, so I, I was like, oh, well, okay, it's a little early, but, um, so I had to cancel the TSO performances and then I had to cancel, which uh, the TSO, that hurt, that hurt, that was, that was that cut like a knife. And, and then I had to, um, also cancel Porgy and Bess at the Stereority Festival with Nicholas Harancourt. And I don't know when Nicholas is gonna direct Porgy and Bess again. It may be a once in a lifetime thing, so whatever. But I don't believe in once in a lifetime things. So the thing is, these things had to be canceled, but then I had the six weeks off. So the blessing of not going to do the Stereority Festival with Harancourt was that I could go see my friend Julie get married in Fredericton, because that, that was something that I'd had to give up and that really, really, really hurt me. So the first time I sang was on July 4th. And it was horrible. It was, oh, oh, it hurt. I, that was the first time that I actually thought, well, this was kind of a serious thing. Because up until that point, I, I had kind of thought, well, I still feel like me, still is me, until I, got up to sing and realized how hard it actually is. Because it wasn't my body anymore, I lost a lot of muscle, yeah. lost a lot of weight, worst diet ever. <laughs> and I still could feel the sternum kind of cracking a bit, you know, just it was still solidifying itself. And every time I took a deep breath, I felt lightheaded. And I'd only picked like a two page piece. Like I was like, I just want to show up give him the gift and you know and I couldn't I mean oh it was, it was so painful and it was kind of then that I thought well maybe I should take a couple more weeks <laughs> maybe I should uh, you know just take it easy and I yeah I, I don't know I still don't have that much perspective on it because I'm the type of person who will just kind of, I take a this too will pass kind of attitude to stuff. I mean, my dad says that quite often, this too will pass, pass when I'm, you know, obsessing about something or upset about something or it sounds like a band-aid, but it's the truth. I mean, this nothing lasts forever, both the good and the bad. And, um, and I just, I had to get a little, Zen and the art of recovery from heart surgery about it, because I, I had hoped it would just go away, because it's, it's something that I didn't really want to dwell on, you know, because I hate appearing weak. I hate that. I just kind of think because I am constantly in the position of being responsible for people's money, because people pay to see me sing, so I feel responsible to them. So it's very difficult to show any kind of vulnerability because you don't want them to think that their money was wasted. So when it comes to my job, I really am the one responsible for your good time. And I will never let you down. <laughs>